and welcome to our special event, Tea with Mother Seton's Daughter. My name is Claire, and I'll be your host for today. Today, we're going to get a glimpse into the daily lives of the sisters and students of St. Joseph's Academy, as well as meet Catherine, Mother Seton's middle daughter, as she returns home to reminisce about her time as a student and connect with old friends. In the second half of our presentation, we invite you to participate in our Q&A session, so please leave your comments or questions in the comments below, and I'll get to as many as I can that are relevant to our topic today. Without further ado, we are going to be going back in time to St. Joseph's House in the year 1818. Xavier, how lovely to see you. Of course I do. How was your afternoon walk? Oh, it was quite lovely. I do enjoy walking around the gardens here, especially reflecting on the scripture. Would you like some sugar? Oh, no, thank you. I take my tea black. <laughs> well, we have not had a moment to speak since you've arrived. Tell me about your travels. Well, I just came back from New York and Philadelphia. In fact, and you won't believe this, sister, I actually traveled to New, New York by steamboat. Have you heard of those? I have heard of them. That must have been quite an adventure. It was quite a harrowing adventure <laughs> indeed. <laughs> so how was New York? I do love the city. Well, it was quite lovely. I had the chance to visit with my family and friends and attend some parties and see the fashion of New York, which is quite different from here in the Vale. Yes, it is. <laughs> but it was uncomfortable at times. I do love being back here in Emmitsburg. Oh. But sister, you mentioned that you're familiar with New York. Are you from there? Um, no, I lived there for just a short time. I'm actually from San Domingo. Oh. and There was an uprising there and my father passed away and my mother moved the family to Orleans. That's where I met my husband and son. And then we moved to New York, and I met Sister Rose White. <laughs> but then my husband and son both passed away very quickly, and Sister Rose White knew what I needed. She sent me here to the, to the veil, to the sisters, and she told me that I would find my peace here. And you know, we always listen to Sister Rose. <laughs> I know you've had that experience. Yes, Sister Rose can be quite persistent. In fact, I've known her ever since I was a child. She was actually in Baltimore when we first were there with our group of sisters there. And she helped take care of my sisters when they were ill. I know she'd be quite worried to hear how ill mother is right now. Yes, we are all quite worried actually. Your mother has taken quite a turn. Mm. But we still elected her for a third time as mother <laughs> superior. But her spirits have been quite lifted since you've arrived and to know that you're going to spend the summer and we're hoping you're going to teach. Yes, I'd love to have the opportunity to teach at the academy and free school. Will you have many students here during the summer holiday? Well, we hope to have a few. In fact, I was putting a list together. I'm sure you'll recognize some of the names on the list. I do. Their parents are traveling on holiday and asked if they could stay here for the summer. Now, with the free school, as you know, especially during the summertime, those families that live here locally, they do not have domestic help like the academy girls. And so they're needed at home often to take care of the younger siblings or to help with the planting. But I hope that they can attend for most of the summer. Well, that sounds quite lovely. I'd love to have the opportunity to teach music and piano lessons like I did when I was here a few years ago. Well, I heard you were quite good. Oh, why, thank you. You flatter me. <laughs> but with such few girls here during the summer holiday, it will give me the opportunity to do some charity work in the Vale. I do enjoy working with the families there. And sister, I think you'd be quite pleased to hear that I have much improved in my music and art mm. skills. Actually, while I was staying in Baltimore, Miss Catherine Harper had some private instructors give me lessons. That family has blessed me indeed. Yes, well, I think that sounds perfect. I'm going to continue being mistress of the novices. We have a few girls that are arriving this summer. Um, they want to start taking formation. Sister Adele has decided to continue with French instruction. and. 
I think as always, we better continue with geography and spelling. Ah, very important. <laughs> but Miss Elizabeth and Emily should be arriving and they'll be spending the summer with us. I'm sure they'll be quite pleased to see you. Yes, I'm quite familiar with the Harper girls. Emily, the poor girl, does challenge the memory of her sister, Mary Diana. She can be a handful sometimes, but I know that she means well and her heart is in the right place. Yes, I agree. Also, looking at this list here, it appears that Jane Fox will be here too. She will be, and so will her sister Elizabeth and Mary. Mary, the first time, will be here. Did you have a chance to see them when you were in New York? No, I did not get the opportunity to stay with the Fox family while I was in New York, but Mr. Robert Fox has been such a blessing to the sisters here. As you most likely know, when they first arrived in New York, he let them stay in his home. Yes, well, he escorted them from here oh, all the way to New really? York. And then when they arrived and the mother house was not complete, the family took them in for a few weeks, I believe. Wow. They traveled all over the city and showed them all the sights. I think that was probably quite an adventure for the <laughs> sisters. I'm sure. But Anne Marie O'Conway will be here uh, also. You're familiar with the O'Conway family, I'm sure. Yes, I am very familiar with the O'Conway family. Actually, Sister Cecilia O'Conway was one of the first sisters with us in Baltimore. And her younger sister, Isabel, was one of our first students. Well, Anna Maria is quite a pleasant child, but <laughs> she does have trouble speaking in turn. Um, I think you had trouble with that, so maybe the two of you will be kindred spirits, like your mother and I are. Well, when I was a child, I did have trouble speaking out of turn during instruction. It took me quite some time to earn my certificate in that, but I'm sure that we can be kindred spirits just as you and my mother are. Well, we will be giving instruction also on stitches. Uh -huh. Um, there are a few girls here actually locally, um, Eleonora and Juliana Elder. I know you're familiar with that family. Yes. They're quite anxious to finish their samplers, but they are at a very slow pace, so hopefully <laughs> by the fall. I know you enjoyed um, cross stitch as well. I did. Some of my fondest memories here at the Academy are working on my cross stitching and of course the descriptive pieces that all the girls are required to do. I actually recall mother hanging one of my cross stitching pieces in this classroom. Yes, actually it's still hanging and she likes to point out that you misspelled your name. <laughs> but you were very young and it's a very good piece. It's a very good example for the other girls. You flatter me, sister. Well, I do know that especially with the girls working on their descriptive pieces here as well, that it can be challenging at times, but it does allow one to grow closer to the Lord and learn to work patiently. Yes, I do think that it brings peace. Oh my, look what time it is. Will you be joining us for prayers in the work basket room? I don't think I will this afternoon, sister. I'm actually gonna sit with my mother and say our prayers. I do enjoy our time together. Oh, I think that's quite lovely. Thank you for spending this time with me. Thank you, sister. Thank you for joining us today. I am Lisa, I play Sister Xavier, um, and I'm a living history historian here. I also help with the junior history interpreters, and I do a lot of the research for our programs. And hi, my name is Caitlin. I'm a college student, and I work here during my summers. So I'm a tour guide, and I've also been a living history interpreter for about the last two years. So what you witnessed today was the first of many conversations between Catherine and Sister Xavier. They met that summer of 1818. Um, Catherine becomes her mother's um, personal secretary, really. Mother seat is too weak to continue writing letters, which she did enjoy doing. So Catherine continues to do that for family and friends. Sister Xavier becomes Mother Seton's personal assistant. And so they're in conversation every day. And this friendship that develops continues well into the 1840s. And I think the friendship that uh, Mother Xavier and Catherine Seaton formed is reflected in Lisa and I's friendship as well that we've formed through interpreting these <laughs> characters. Yes, we have. I know it's not just reading and reciting and memorizing lines, it's becoming that character, truly interpreting them. And I think there's a lot of things that I can resonate with, with Catherine Seaton 
as I said earlier, I'm a college student. And I'm going through that process of wandering and figuring out what I want to do in my life. And Catherine had that same period of life after her mother passed away. She traveled for the next 20 years, and she did not know what direction her life was going to take. So I find a lot of solace in that, reading some of what Catherine has said, and I can really identify with that. So I think I identify with Sister Xavier also. Um, to be honest, Living History was not where I was planning to go. <laughs> um, the costume is not the most attractive. I think it's um, quite flattering. <laughs> <laughs> However, um, the more I learned about her, the more I really wanted to interpret her. There is so much to her story. Um, I think that's true with all of the sisters that surrounded Mother Seton, and I think it makes Mother Seton's story more complete. So I think um, we both have enjoyed not only portraying these characters, but becoming friends as well. Thank you, Lisa and Caitlin. Hello again, everyone. This is Claire, and we are going to begin our question and answer portion of the program. As a reminder, we are accepting questions that are written in the comments, and I will get to as many questions as possible that are relevant to today's topic. On that note, Lisa and Caitlin, we do have our first question. What becomes of Catherine and Xavier? Well, Sister Xavier, she stays here um, for the rest of her life, except for one small mission out. Um, the most important thing I think that she does is a few years after Mother Seton passes away with Sister Rose White, who had come back after Mother Seton's death to be Mother Superior, um, they start a nursing program. Um, that becomes very important as we move through time because the sisters start helping at hospitals with so many illnesses that are happening during that time. But also by the time we get to the Civil War, we have many sisters that are trained as nurses and they became so important to the men here in the United States. Um, but I also think she became Mother Superior in the 1840s and she does a lot of work. She changes this house into an orphanage and tries to get it back to the way it was when Mother Seton was here. And as for Catherine Seton, actually from what you just witnessed in 1818, she does become a teacher here. She earns $200 a year teaching music and piano lessons and she would eventually become her mother's secretary in 1820. It wasn't until after her mother's death in 1821 that she truly went out to go and seek and explore the world. Originally, she wanted to become a sister of charity here, but it wasn't until Father Dubois told her that she needed to go out and get some more life experience before she made such a monumental decision. So over the next 20 years, she spent that portion of her life traveling. She went on three tours of Europe. She had some quite interesting experience. She yes. climbed the Alps twice, mm -hmm. and she also uh, was involved with the Revolution of 1830 in France. She partied with Lafayette after they <laughs> overthrew the Bourbon monarchy. Yeah. <laughs> so she definitely has quite a lively history and life, and it's so fascinating learning more and more about her every day. But Catherine would eventually come back here in 1846. She would become a Sister of Mercy in New York. And her time in Europe was well spent as she picked up six languages. So she was really able to communicate with the prisoners in New York. She would eventually become Mother Superior and she would die at the ripe old age of 91. So our next question is, how many students were enrolled in both the academy and free school? So we know that by the time Mother Seton passed away, there were 80 students enrolled at the academy. Those would have been students that would have been boarders, that would have been living here. And so we have a better idea of who they were because um, there were transactions, things the sisters bought for them, and also letters home to the families. The free school students, those students that lived here locally, that were really um, here, they attended free. Um, our own scholarship, and those are much harder to get a list of names because Mother Seton would have talked to those parents in person, and she would not have had to buy things for them. And so there's only a few names scattered here and there, so we're just not sure of the total attendance. We just know that there were 80 boarders here at the time that Mother Seton passed away. So our next question is from Shelley. She was interested in the scripts or how we do our research behind these events. Well, <laughs> it's a lot of reading, and I've been doing a lot of reading lately. Um, there are many places online that you can find information. Um, there are some great books that have been put out by different sisters, Sister Betty Ann McNeil, Sister Judy Metz, that really um, give insight onto those early sisters. 
Um, and so we kind of just scour through everything. It's like putting a puzzle together because you find one line here and another line there that kind of puts it all together of what life was like here. And I think what's so beautiful about the process is that Lisa and I have been working together for such a long time that we just withdraw from our knowledge and we work with it. Every single time that we've practiced what you just saw today, it was different. It's not completely memorized. It's kind of ad-libbed at some point, but it's all historically accurate in the spirit of living history. It's not supposed to be a play. It's supposed to be an interpretation of their characters. So we bring a piece of ourselves into right. it as well. Yeah, absolutely. That's the, that is very true. And, and I think, um, like she said, every time we practice, it was different because we start to focus in on the different characters and their personalities. Okay. Our next question was you mentioned many students' names. Were these real students that Mother Seen taught? And what was the nature of the relationship she shared with those families? So yes, they were actual students that were here. Part of our living history program with, um, with that, we have some junior interpreters. There are young girls here that are portraying students that attended the school. And so through our research, we um, go into those students and we actually have the junior interpreters do research on those students. Now some of the families that we mentioned, the Harper family, the O'Conway family, um, they were um, people that became close to the Seton family. They became close to Mother Seton. They became benefactors. They helped her um, with the children even after she passed away. As we mentioned, Catherine became very good friends with the Harper family and she lives with them and travels with them after Mother Seton passes away. Nancy wants to know, is tea viewed as a social occasion or is it done on a more regular basis like a meal? I think tea was something that they took time for every day just to have that afternoon rest. I think they were better about that than we are today. <laughs> Is Catherine Sandler displayed in the White House? How often do the other girls make appearances? So Catherine Sandler is actually displayed in the White House. We have it right here. Um, her mistake is in here. Her name is spelled wrong, actually. <laughs> <laughs> but she did do this piece when she was just seven years old. And all the girls would have learned cross-stitching as it was very important for every young lady to be able to do needlework. Right. So they would actually start needlework as early as five years old. So for Catherine to be able to do this piece at seven, that was quite common. Um, it was important because they didn't even have the sewing machine by then. And so to show that girls were ready to run their own household, they would have had to know how to do their stitches. And so the academy girls did samplers, but also the preschool girls. This was something that was a requirement of every student. Our next question was, what happened to the community after Mother Seton's death? How did the leadership change over time? So immediately after Mother Seton had passed away, um, Sister Rose White came back from New York to become Mother Superior. That was, actually it could have been Philadelphia, but that was something that Mother Seton requested. She wanted Mother Rose White to become the next Mother Superior. She does. And then we have um, Sister Augustine DeCount and then Mother Rose White again. And then we have um, Sister Xavier. So after Sister Xavier, we have Sister Antoinette Hall. She was the first sister, and there were t this is about 1846, that did not know Mother Seton. So those first Mother Superiors were part of Mother Seton's close circle. And so they really progressed with the school the way that she would have wanted it. Um, it did expand, and girls were sent out on missions. Sisters, I should say, were sent out on missions. We started the Sisters of Charity of Cincinnati. Um, and so it kind of expanded from there. Our next question is, what is the significance of the paintings behind you? Well, actually, if you look at our first painting here, it was done around 1809 when Mother Seton would have first come here to Emmitsburg. You can see the stone house and the White House. The next painting would have been around Mother Seton's death. It shows the Dubois building, which became the Academy building here in Emmitsburg, and finally, the painting behind me, the final one, is from 1848, I believe. Yes. It shows the college that was eventually started here. Okay. What made you interested <laughs> in living history? Well, um, <laughs> I've always been very interested in public speaking and 
I wanted to become a history major at one point. I did choose to major in political science, however, but I've always been interested in reading other people's stories and seeing life through their eyes and re relating that to my conception of history itself. So I think it's much different reading somebody on a piece of paper and then taking that and interpreting that as a living historian. So it definitely is exciting. Um, it's nerve wracking a lot of times. <laughs> I was very nervous before this started, but it's also really enjoyable and fun because you get to put a piece of yourself into it as well. Yes, I mean, I will agree. As I said earlier, this is not something that I wanted to do. I would always say I'm never getting into a hoop skirt, but um, <laughs> I have. Um, but I think the same thing that Caitlin just expressed. I think the more you do it and the more you learn about these characters and what their life was like, um, it does put the whole puzzle together. It really expands on who Mother Seton was and what she meant to everyone. Okay, we have another question. What was Elizabeth Ann Seton the patron saint of? And when was she canonized? Okay. So uh, Mother Seton, um, there's lots of things that they say that she's the patron saint of. Um, she is the patron saint of schools um, and sea services. Um, sea services is quite interesting because her son was in the military. And so that's where that connection kind of comes about. Um, and that is really kind of beautiful to me. Um, and here at the Shrine, we do a large mass every October to kind of honor that. Um, what's the second part of the question? I'm sorry. Uh, when was she canonized? Oh. So she was canonized in 1975. Um, so it was quite an ordeal. It took a very long time for her to get to that point. Um, but what's quite wonderful is that we have sisters that are still living today that actually took part in that. And our last question for today is am I able to come on site and experience this living history program? So as of right now, we are not having visitors currently at the Shrine experience our living history program because of what's going on with the coronavirus. But I believe it is our intent to get this program ramped up and going as soon as it is safe to invite visitors back. Well, actually, we're hoping that for Mother Seton's birthday party yes. that we always have the last Sunday in August, that we will be having um, Living History and we'll actually have the junior interpreters here so you'll be able to meet some of those students that we talked about. Um, and then we should be able to get up and running, I think, after that. Um, and then we have a wonderful program at Christmas. So if you're close by, you should come and, and see that also. So thank you for joining us. I know there was a question about um, research. So you can go to the Vincent de Paul Institute. Um, they have a lot of free articles on there and including all of Mother Seton's writings, the collective writings of Elizabeth Ann Seton. We pulled mostly from volume two today and there's also an article called Catherine Josephine Seton and the New York Experience that really gives an overview of her whole life. So thank you. We would like to thank you for visiting us or joining us today. Um, if you want to get any of the resources that Lisa was talking about, you can on our website, seatonshrine.org. And thank you, and we'll see you next time.